So this video, we're going to look at complex numbers, uh, starting from the beginning, uh, where they come from. The complex numbers is the largest set of numbers that we have. Um, basically, you have to understand where it comes from. We know that there are there are real numbers, of course, which you are all familiar with. These are the numbers we've been dealing with almost all our lives. Um, they are called real numbers because they're real. Um, meaning, the of course, we're talking about real numbers, the... Um, uh, represented by this set, uh, the real number set, and um, all numbers uh, 1, 2, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, the decimal numbers, all anything, anything you can think of is uh, negative, positive, are all real numbers. Then there is another set of numbers called imaginary numbers. Okay, imaginary numbers um, come from, uh, they emanate from the square root. The square root is a problematic operation when you, you cannot take the square root of a negative number we all know that square root of minus four for instance we can't calculate it um well what people decided to do was well say it okay square root of minus one if we let square root of minus minus one be i which is the greek letter iota okay iota so now for those who are uh, engineers reading this um the letter j is used because i is for current so if you're an electronic or electrical engineer, you'd probably be using J, um, for instance, in many textbooks, even like uh, engineering texts and mathematics, the letter J is used for for representing imaginary numbers. So, uh, but in, in ma mathematics, we just use I, so I'm going to continue with the I, but you can convert it to a J. Anywho, so the thing is, so the square root of minus one is considered I. By this definition, which is a key definition, um, this gives birth to these imaginary numbers. Now, using this, this, uh, of course, can be written as um, just 2i, in fact, okay? Because you can break up the minus 4 into 4, square root of 4, multiplied by square root of minus 1. So that basically, the square root of 4 is 2, and, uh, and square root of minus 1 is i, so it becomes 2i. So in this way, we have imaginary numbers. Now, when you so what do you do when you uh, when you ha when you add numbers? This is the where the problem begins. Is when we have to add numbers. Now adding two i to four i is not a difficult thing to do. We know algebra; it follows the same rules of algebra, just like two x plus three x. It's six i. The issue we 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 come across a problem when we say, okay, what is three plus two i? In other words, this is a real number. So this is real. And this is imaginary. What do we do in a situation like this? Well, we can't, apples and oranges can't be mixed. So, in fact, this type, this situation gives rise to what are called complex numbers. So complex numbers are combinations are, uh, of, of real and imaginary numbers. And the only real uh, combination we mean by combination is the sum of a real number and an imaginary pure, a pure real, a pure imaginary and a real number add up to form complex numbers. So the number is complex. That's what it means. It's complicated. It's a mix of these two different types of numbers, real and imaginary. Okay. So that gives birth to the concept of um, uh, the, the complex number, um, complex numbers, and therefore an entire algebra has to be developed for complex numbers. Usually we use the letter Z to represent complex numbers. And a complex number is con consists of a real part and an imaginary part. This is called its real part. Okay, this is the real part. And this one here, the, the Y is called the imaginary part. Okay, imaginary part. Now, so that's, uh, that's basically what it is. Uh, y itself, and we use, um, there's, there are operators in fact, so RE is the operator that gives us the real part. So R P R E of Z is X and I M, which is imaginary part of Z is Y. Okay. So, um, so if we had, for instance, seven plus two I, then R E of seven plus two I is seven and I M of two, uh, sorry, seven plus two I is two. So that's how it works. All right, let's move on. That's that's the basics of uh, complex numbers. Now we can, of course, draw complex numbers as well. 
um, you know, you can't get away without drawing a graph of a function or a graph of a number. We have to be able to plot them. What you do is you have, you have to define your axes. So you have the real uh, axis, which is the x-axis. So we can say x is equal to the real part of z, for instance. And you have the the imaginary, or sorry, the uh, the imaginary axis, which is your y-axis, which is the imaginary part of z. So you have a you have a real axis, which is the horizontal axis, is the real part, and an imaginary part is that. So, for instance, now you can think of this as an ordered pair. So, for instance, the number seven plus two i that I have here, seven plus two i would be like. Uh, 7 would be the real part, so that's the hor so it'll be an ordered pair 7, 2 is how you'd plot it. So basically, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, and there's that, okay, is 7 plus, sorry, 7 plus 2i. Okay, so if it was 3 uh, minus uh, 3i, or 3 minus uh, 2i, so it'll be 3 and then negative so it's 3 minus 2i so that's how you basically um, draw the function these are points at the moment at the moment there are points I mean just think of them as coordinates uh, the real part is the x coordinate and the imaginary part is the uh, y coordinate okay so that's how this is called and these are this is called an argand diagram okay it's called argand diagram it's called an argand diagram Okay, so it's called an Argand diagram. Now, let's move on. Uh, let's look at the algebra uh, next of complex numbers. Um, obviously, um, algebra for algebra, we are we are of course talking about addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, and equality. Uh, equality being extremely important. So, two complex numbers, z one. Uh, let's say is x one plus um, i y one okay and z two is another complex number which is x two plus i y two then um, equality let's talk about equality for a second so I'm going to use these two um, examples I mean these these two definitions to define a few uh, ideas equality first equality uh, z one equals z two implies that x1 equals x2 and at the same time y1 also equals y2. So when two complex numbers are equal, the real parts and imaginary parts are equal. Okay, that's necessary. It's necessary that their real parts and their imaginary parts be equal. Okay, for the sake of argument. Suppose that that's only that means that 3a plus b is equal to the real part and minus 2a plus b is equal to minus 2. So you get these simultaneous equations and of course if you do if we continue we subtract these two this cancels and we get 3 and 2 5a 5a equals 7 so a is equal to 7 over 5 and we can find the other uh, the b quite easily then by substituting it in. But anyway this is a quick example of what equality can lead to and how you can manipulate these um, uh, complex numbers. Okay, let's move on a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to leave these definitions up here. Let's talk about addition of numbers. So z1 plus z2. z1 plus z2 is x1 plus x2 becomes your real part. So you add the real parts, the corresponding parts. So you add the real parts and you add the imaginary parts. Couldn't be easier. Same thing with subtraction. So just what you're doing is this all right so if it's z1 minus z2 it's going to be x1 minus x2 plus i into y1 minus y2 so for instance 3 plus 2i okay and if we add to it the complex number 7 minus 2i okay so that's going to be equal to 3 plus 7 is 10 okay sorry about that let's make that minus 3i and uh, 2 minus 3 is minus i assuming the same definitions of z1 and z2 Okay, let's talk about what is z1 multiplied by z2. So for instance, this is what we this is how we defined that's your z1 and here is z2, x2 plus i y2. Now when you multiply, you 
Think of this as an algebra, but you keep in mind the definition of i. What I mean by that is the following. It will be very similar like multiplying a plus b into c plus d. Okay, you know the rules of multiplication. So this would become x1, x2 plus you'd have uh, i x1, y2 plus i y1, x2 and plus i squared y1, y2. So the interesting one is this last one. This is the only adjustment you have to make. But let me just add the pieces together for a second. Uh, here we can, we, we have basically got um, x1, y2 plus y1, x2. Group them together. They are pure, they are imaginary parts. And here, what is i squared? i squared is minus 1, in fact. So this becomes minus y1, y2 which means the finally, finally the number in proper format would be, this is a real part, and x2i. So you can see it, it really follows um, uh, the rules of algebra. The only thing you have to keep in mind is it follows the rules of algebra, but you have to always replace i squared by minus one. If you, do, if you keep that in mind, you can almost do any kind of algebra or uh, any algebraic manipulation, subtraction, addition, uh, and multiplication quite easily. Let's look at division. Division is quite interesting, again, because of this, um, uh, this kind of manipulation that might be possible. So let's have a look. Um, so z1 over z2 looks reasonably straightforward and seems there is nothing much to be done, but there is more than meets the eye. So we have a simple, uh, a similar idea like ra rationalizing radicals. There is also rationalizing uh, complex numbers. So uh, here you could, uh, you, what, you, what I mean by that is each complex number, okay, each complex number has what's called, what has a complex conjugate, okay? It's conjugate pair, okay? It's called a complex conjugate. So each Number, like for instance, x plus iy, its complex conjugate is x minus iy. They're always in pairs. Okay, they're always in pairs. If one is a root to a, um, a polynomial equation, the other one has to be there. It's impossible that it not be there. Okay, they always uh, go in pairs. Now, this is called a complex, they're, compli they're conjugates of each other. Now, interesting thing is, uh, there's an algebraic property that gets exploited here. Uh, which is that if I were to, for instance, multiply and divide by the complex conjugate of the denominator, which means this. Okay, so the complex conjugate of x plus 2i, y2, x minus 2i, y2. Okay, what happens is very interesting. The top is, okay, it's just a multiplication, so we'll just multiply it through x1, x2, um, then you have minus uh, i x1 y2 plus i x2 y1 minus i squared y1 y2. And the nice part is it's, it's divided in fact by, uh, what's the really cool part, is it's divided by x2 squared minus i squared y2 squared. Now, if you look at this, uh, let's group, let's uh, make, change all i squares to negative 1. What happens is we get x1, x2 plus y1, y2 on top. This i squared, there's an i squared here that becomes minus, minus, minus is plus, so it gives us plus y1, y2. Okay, and then we group the, the, the rest, so we end up with plus x2y1 minus x1y2i. Okay, and then the cool part is this denominator becomes real. It's all real. There is no, it's not complex anymore. It's, uh, it's real, uh, uh, in fact. So you could actually now separate this and rewrite this as... Um, 
z1 over z2 can be written as x1, x2 plus y1, y2 over, yani you can take out its real part. I mean, you can take out its real part. Okay, that's the real part. Plus, you have x2, y1 minus x1, y2 over x squared, x2 squared plus y2 squared into i. So now you have, this is your real part and this is your imaginary part. Okay, so that kind of manipulation uh, can be done using the complex uh, conjugate. So that's basically division. Um, and of course, uh, one, you, this idea can be applied to any complex numbers. Let's look at a quick example. Uh, 3 plus 2i divided by 7 plus, uh, 7 plus 3 minus 3i, for instance. And the question could be, um, find the real and imaginary parts of this number, uh, for, of this, uh, this fraction. So in order to do that, what you'd first have to do is multiply this by the, it's always the de denominator is always a good choice unless you need to somehow make the top uh, real. But here we will use 7 plus 3i. And this is also going to be 7 plus 3i, of course, the complex conjugate of the denominator. This gives us uh, 21, 21 plus 9i, okay, plus 14i, right? And then 2, 3 is 6i squared, which is minus 6. So now I'm going to, I think you better get used to the i squares. So i squared is going to be, so it's going to be 2, 3 is 6i squared, which is minus 6. And the denominator is just going to be 49 plus 9, okay? Because you're going to get minus 9 squared, 9i squared, which is going to give you plus 9. So then that's equal to, let's collect the parts, relevant parts. 21 minus 6 is 15. 15 plus 9 and uh, 14 is 23. 23i, all divided by 49 and 9 is 58. So therefore... We end up with 15 over 58 plus 23 over 58i. And now you can separate the real part and the imaginary part. Right, the complex conjugate, some of its properties, very interesting properties. Um, Notation-wise, if z is the complex number, we say z star is the complex conjugate. Okay, z plus z star, okay, is going to always be... Uh, uh, and assu I'm assuming, of course, z is x plus i y, and of course, z star would be x minus i y, the complex conjugate. So you can see z plus z star is going to give you 2x, which is real, which is equal to twice the real part of z, okay? z minus z star clearly is going to get rid of the real part, so the real part will go away, and you'll be left with um, 2iy, which means it is equal to twice the imaginary part of z. Okay, times i, of course. i, 2i, imaginary part of z. Okay, and uh, z times z star is just x squared plus y squared, okay? And another interesting property is if you have two complex numbers, then z1, z2 star of the product is the conjugate of the individuals. Simple as that, okay? So that basically covers some of the